The U.S. develops the mother of all motion sensors to counter GPS jamming in war zones, and it might show up in Ukraine sooner than you think. Privyet Druzy Wes O'Donnell here, veteran of the U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force, and Yagover Yuporuski. And today we're talking about an exciting new development that will make U.S. munitions impervious to GPS jamming. In Ukraine, reports are surfacing that U.S.-made weapons augmented by Global Positioning System satellites are now susceptible to Russian electronic jamming. Now, scientists at Sandia National Laboratories, which is owned by the U.S. government, created a motion sensor so precise that it could greatly reduce reliance on GPS. As you might imagine, this could have big implications for numerous industries, but especially defense. In a major leap forward, scientists at Sandia have created a next-generation quantum motion sensor designed to operate without GPS. Dubbed the mother of all motion sensors, this device could drastically reduce the U.S.'s reliance on GPS in combat zones, where signals are often jammed or spoofed by enemy forces. What makes this sensor revolutionary is its foundation in quantum mechanics. The team at Sandia has leveraged atom interferometry, a cutting-edge quantum sensing technique that measures motion with unprecedented precision. This technology promises to offer unmatched accuracy in tracking, acceleration, and angular velocity, even in places where GPS simply doesn't work. Think subterranean environments or zones of intense electronic warfare like Ukraine. One of the keys to this breakthrough is the development of a new high-performance silicon photonic modulator. It's essentially a chip-scale laser system. In simple terms, a modulator controls the characteristics of light, specifically its frequency. But traditional modulators come with a catch. They create unwanted sidebands, essentially light's equivalent of audio echoes. These sidebands interfere with the signal, reducing accuracy. Enter Sandia's new modulator, which cuts these unwanted frequencies by a jaw-dropping 47.8 decibels. Decibels, typically a unit of measure for sound, but also applicable to light intensity, reducing them by nearly 100,000 times. The new modulator is the centerpiece of a laser system on a microchip. Rugged enough to handle heavy vibrations, it would replace conventional laser systems that are typically the size of a refrigerator. Here's where it gets even more interesting. The technology isn't just better, it's cheaper. Quantum sensors and the laser systems they rely on are expensive to build and deploy with a single commercially available modulator costing upwards of $10,000. But by miniaturizing these components onto silicon photonic chips, Sandia has slashed costs dramatically. This cost reduction paves the way for mass production, making these advanced quantum navigation systems more accessible and scalable for both military and civilian uses. While GPS independent navigation is the obvious headline here, the applications of this technology go far beyond war zones. But the ultimate goal is to create a compact, cost-effective quantum compass that can be deployed across a range of industries. My interest, though, is in using this tech in defense applications, especially after we've now seen successful Russian jamming of U.S. munitions like the Excalibur artillery shell. Indeed, Russia is no slouch in the area of electronic jamming. GPS jamming uses a frequency transmitting device to block or interfere with radio communications, usually by broadcasting signals from the ground that are stronger than satellite-based signals, which are far away and weak. GPS spoofing is just as bad, if not worse. Spoofing might involve one country's military sending false GPS signals to an enemy plane or drone to hinder its ability to function, and is often considered more dangerous than jamming. Perhaps most alarming, GPS jamming, uh, once so expensive that it was confined to nation-state actors, is now available to nearly everyone. A $25 Chinese-made jammer found on Alibaba can block GPS signals all around a car, while a 2- or 3-watt jammer the size of a cigarette pack, available for a couple hundred quid, 
could mask several city blocks. In one example of how common these jammers have become over the last decade, in 2013, a New Jersey truck driver who wanted to hide his location from his boss used a civilian GPS jammer that inadvertently jammed air traffic control at Newark every time he drove by the airport. Whoops. Authorities located the driver and hit him with a $32,000 fine from the Federal Communications Commission. And as recently as 2015, military leaders, policymakers, and defense experts lamented our dependence on GPS for the military. In an interview with Defense News, Al Simon, the navigation systems marketing manager for Rockwell Collins, once said, quote, there is no magic bullet that can replace GPS. Well, now there is, Mr. Simon. Until now, the U.S. defense community has been desperately looking for either augmentation to munitions primary navigation systems, hardening current GPS against interference, or looking for something that's non-GPS entirely. Now they have their non-GPS answer. Russia can't jam or spoof a miniature quantum sensing compass. And that's exactly what the big brains over at Sandia Labs have developed. No doubt the Department of Defense is all over this news, waiting eagerly to slap a top-secret label on this technology. But it might be some time before these ultra-precise motion sensors start showing up in U.S. munitions, like the Joint Direct Attack Munition, the JDAM, or the Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile, the JASM, both of which heavily rely on GPS for targeting. Russia and China have both invested heavily in disrupting the U.S. military connection with its military and civilian GPS satellites, from jamming on the ground to creating anti-satellite missiles to hit our communications in the event of war. This is a good example of the U.S. military recognizing a vulnerability and funneling resources into a long-term fix. Ultimately, this technology will be distributed out to U.S. allies across Europe and the Pacific, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this appear on the Ukrainian battlefield sooner rather than one might expect. U.S. defense contractors have already sent several experimental systems to test in Ukraine, like AM General's soft recoil artillery piece. What better place to test this motion sensor's capability than on an active battlefield against Russia? With the bonus that Ukraine gets its hands on cutting-edge tech even before U.S. troops. Precision targeting has been U.S. military doctrine for the better part of four decades. Words like surgical strikes were common during the global war on terror. This technology will allow the U.S. to maintain its precision capabilities, which help reduce civilian deaths and lessen collateral property damage. As for the Sandia scientists, I imagine it's a dream come true to see your hard work in the lab translate into practical applications that will help both the civilian industry and defense communities. Peter Schwent, a quantum sensing scientist at Sandia, said, quote, I have a passion around seeing these technologies move into real applications. Well, there you have it. That's it for today. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Slava Ukraini.